I'm Kim Nace, co-founder of the Rich Earth Institute, and I'm here today beside the Connecticut River. In the Northeast, the Connecticut River, known as the Quenetuk by the Abenaki, is the longest river that we have in New England. It is 400 miles long, and it makes its way from Vermont all the way through Massachusetts and Connecticut to Long Island Sound. Long Island Sound has some problems with nutrient pollution, and some of that nutrient pollution comes from our activity up here in the northern section. We are washing the nutrients from our body through the soils and out into this watershed. And then they go to the Long Island Sound and it's a problem. It's a really big problem. Rich Earth Institute is really proud to be part of the movement to acknowledge our responsibility as people to protect our watershed. And that's what we're working towards. My name's Abe Noe Hayes. I'm the research director here at the Rich Earth Institute. And I've um, been here since the beginning, since 2012 working on, uh, on how to recycle urine into something useful. Um, the reason that we do this is because currently when we flush urine down the drain, there are a lot of plant nutrients in urine, like nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, zinc, iron, all the vital elements are in urine. And when we flush them down the drain, a lot of them end up in rivers and in lakes and in Long Island Sound. And once they get there, they become plant fertilizer for algae that live in the water that actually shouldn't be there. Um, in uh, high levels. So that fertilizer fertilizes algae that grows, makes shade, it dies, absorbs oxygen, kills fish, causes environmental damage. That's one issue with flushing urine down the drain. We have a vision for a different way of handling it. Instead of flushing it, we want to collect it, and then we want to use that, that fertilizer value where it's needed, which is on farms. Hi, I'm Ivan Yusak. I'm the executive director of the Rich Earth Institute. Instead of sending our bodily nutrients downstream as waste, here at the Rich Earth Institute, we turn those nutrients into productive fertilizer. This ancient practice of ecological sanitation has been eclipsed in modern times by water-based flush and forget technology. But such productive practices are still in use throughout many parts of the world. There are many benefits to recycling urine. It reduces nutrient pollution downstream, the nutrients are turned into productive fertilizers for use on local farms and gardens. Water is saved in major amounts by not having to flush unnecessarily. Recycling urine also connects us to our local landscapes where we live and strengthens community bonds. Rich Earth operates the nation's first community scale urine diversion program. Our intention is to see communities across the country creating such programs and to help them by providing tools and resources to do so. Welcome to the Rich Earth Institute Urine Depot. Uh, I'm Arthur Davis and I'm the director of the Urine Nutrient Reclamation Program, which is our community scale urine recycling program here in the Brattleboro area. We have about 200 or so urine donors in the greater Brattleboro region and they collect their urine at home and they bring it here to the depot to, uh, to pump it out. When our urine donors fill a five gallon container of, of urine, it saves about 100 gallons of uh, flushable water, assuming that you flush the toilet every time you pee. So it's also kind of a significant water savings in addition to diverting nutrients away from our waterways and uh, providing a sustainable source of fertilizer for local farms. So. We'll go inside and see what's uh, what's going on inside the depot. So here is our urine pumping station. Um, donors just set their jugs right up on this white square, and then um, and then uh, push the handle down into the jug, and we'll uh, show you how it works here. Necessary, and uh, the vacuum pump just gets it totally empty. So, easy as that. The last thing we have people do, we have a uh, a log book where we have a kind of a community competition for uh, who can donate the most urine, and um, so then people fill that up if they if they so choose, and that's all it takes. 
Most people use these five gallon urine collection devices in their homes. It's basically a five gallon jug with a funnel mounted on top. You can either pee directly into it or as an easy to pour into vessel. We have people of all ages, genders who, who use this system. It's come to be part of their daily habit. And we are looking to move towards more permanently plumbed urine diverting systems is where some of these kinds of toilets come in. Uh, here at the Rich Earth Institute, we're piloting uh, one from a Swiss company called Laufen, which you'll see, um, it's in our bathroom. We're also working uh, with this toilet, uh, which is made by a company called Wostman, and has a urine diverter while still being a flush toilet. There are also composting toilets that divert urine. We're currently working through the permitting process with the Vermont DEC to pilot our first permitted installations of urine diverting fixtures and urine collection systems, both in residences and in some commercial buildings. Hopefully someday you'll be able to uh, go into a building and have the bathroom there be a, a urine collection system. So here we are in the Richard Institute bathroom. We're piloting this toilet from the company Laufen. It's a Swiss toilet company. This is called the Laufen Save Toilet. It's kind of a new version of urine diverter. Instead of having two separate places where the feces and the urine go, the urine gets peed onto the shelf and then surface tension holds it and it diverts around into a separate tank. Rich Earth Institute also runs a portable toilet service where we retrofit regular plastic portable toilets into container-based partially urine diverting systems. So uh, let's go inside and see. So you can see it mostly looks the same as a regular portable toilet. Uh, we've rebuilt the commode so that it fits uh, the containers that we need underneath. Basically as a user it's the same exact experience, um, although after you use the sit down seat you just add a cup of sawdust into the seat and, uh, and that's it. We get lots of great feedback from users of this system. A lot of people really like the fact that there's no splashback from the liquid that is often in the bottom of traditional portable toilets. Also, you don't have that chemical smell from the chemical that's down in regular portable toilets. It also smells a little bit like hardwood wood shavings, which is kind of nice. Also, people are really excited that their waste, when they go to the bathroom in a portable toilet, is getting reclaimed. It's going to go to a beneficial use. Underneath, you can see that we have both a urine tank that collects the urine from the urinal, and then also a bin that collects the solids and sawdust and toilet paper and also some urine from the sit-down toilet. When we want to service these, we just pump out the tank of urine and we pull the bin out, put a lid on it, and put in a new bin, get it ready for the next use. The solid we bring to the Claremont, New Hampshire wastewater facility where they do biosolids composting that gets treated under their permit. And then the urine obviously comes back to Rich Earth Institute where we treat it under our permit for pasteurizing urine. So transport is a really important uh, part of our process. We have to bring urine both from homes and the depot to here to be pasteurized and then also from here to farms to be applied. We can carry about a thousand gallons of urine at a time, utilizing the vacuum pumping system and that allows us to transfer urine on and off the truck very quickly. The weight of urine is one of the reasons that we're really interested in concentration technology. If we can dewater urine to a significant extent, then we can really diminish the transport cost and resource intensity of moving urine around. In the future, we envision a system where people would have permits to have urine storage at their home. We would come by a couple times a year, just like they get their fuel oil tanks filled. You might have a urine truck come and pump out your feet. We have a number of these big 1,500 gallon storage tanks. Most of our urine comes from our depot in downtown Brattleboro and then also from people's homes that have storage permits from the state of Vermont and also some commercial entities that have permits for urine storage. And uh, it's actually being pasteurized into right now. Welcome to the Rich Earth Institute Urine Pasteurizer. Pasteurization is a process using heat and time to kill pathogens. Our particular pasteurizer holds the urine at 80 degrees for about 90 seconds. It's a flow through system and it recaptures much of its thermal energy to make it more energy efficient. The pasteurization process meets the standard that we're required to meet for our state of Vermont permit and that allows us to have unrestricted use of the pasteurized urine product in the state of Vermont for agricultural use. 
In the future, we're working on creating a new pasteurizer that will be a little simpler and be able to go out into the world for other applications of urine diversion and collection and reuse. And also hopefully combining that with a concentration technology that will allow us to decrease necessary storage space and also then decrease transport cost and energy for transport. Since 2012, the Rich Earth Institute has been applying pasteurized urine to farmland in Wyndham County in Vermont. Primarily we've been working on hayland with a number of farmers in the area. Early on we did some yield studies and we showed that urine fertilizer has a comparable effect to synthetic fertilizer so that it's a fine substitute for synthetic fertilizer and a lot of the farmers that uh, we work with even say that it has some longer term effects that they've seen over time which is anecdotal but, uh, but I, think, I think also important. This year we're also really excited. We're going to be working with a number of new farmers as part of a SARE study, which is the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program. And we're going to be working with new farmers and new crops and new application methods. And we're going to be doing a bunch of things with drip irrigation, um, as well as some side dressing to corn. So that is very exciting that we'll be kind of expanding from our um, program of, of working with farmers primarily growing hay. We're here at the lab at the Rich Earth Institute and I'm Bradley Kennedy, one of the research associates here. And we are a science-based organization, so research is kind of the foundation of the work that we do. Our community collection program serves as a platform for research, lays the foundation for all the other work that we do here in our lab, our technology development, our agricultural research and our social research. Some of the research that we've done here in the past includes looking at ways of minimizing loss of nitrogen from urine because the nitrogen is really volatile and can be lost to the air. So we've tested different ways to prevent that both in the field and during storage by changing the pH. We've also looked at other things like combining urine with biotar using fermentation to change the pH, and we've done some trials looking at composting urine with other materials as a way of kind of stabilizing it and turning it into a solid. Probably the most common question that we get is about pharmaceutical residues in urine and what happens to them when we use the urine as a fertilizer. It's a really important question and one that we've been studying for the past seven years. So far, all of our results are pointing in the same direction. It seems like most of the pharmaceutical residues are broken down during the treatment of urine or after it's applied to the soil because soil is so good at breaking things down. So right now it seems like there's a negligible risk to the consumer from any pharmaceuticals that might be in the urine. That said, there's still things we don't know and it's, it's an ongoing field of research, but for now we're cautiously optimistic. I'm Tatjana Schreiber and I coordinate the social research that we do. We have been interested in the social transformation that has to happen um, for people to become comfortable with using urine in a different way. The concerns, ideas, values, beliefs that people have about any risks that there might be and the responsibilities that people think that they should have around using urine and transforming our whole waste system and our whole agricultural system. Our whole approach is called participatory action research. We believe that we should try to involve all different kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds and experiences to better understand the range of perspectives that exist around this. The more ideas and the more perspectives you have, the better able we are to design our other kind of research, our technical research, to meet people's needs. One of the really interesting things about this research is that it touches all kinds of people. It touches everyone because we all pee and we all eat. There's a lot of cultural differences in how people think about urine or how it's been used you know, historically in different cultures and in different places around the world. We're interested in those stories, things that people remember. You know, People tell us that, oh yeah, my, my grandfather always said to pee in the garden or whatever. So to understand how it's used in different places um, will help us with putting our current research in perspective. Of those we've talked to so far, it's really interesting that most people are not really uh, disgusted by the idea of using urine as a fertilizer. They think about it and they think, yeah, that makes sense. That seems like a good idea. But um, what's interesting is that they often think that other people will have some disgust or discomfort with it. People are 
much more comfortable with it than we originally thought they would be, but they often think or ascribe to other people um, a level of disgust or discomfort. So what we think that means is that it's important to gather people together to share ideas and see if your assumptions about other people are actually um, true or maybe you're just assuming this about other people. So this is our Rich Earth Institute Research and Demonstration Garden. We've tried to um, experiment a little bit with different aspects of how you can use urine in a home garden situation. We're educating people as we learn about it, and we're also very interested in hearing everybody's stories and experiences. And then we are developing some community science initiatives to have people help us with these experiments. I am Jed Bloom, the Director of Development here at the Rich Earth Institute. And we have so many exciting things planned with a big renovation project here. We invite anybody who wants to come check out what we're doing at our research center to come give us a visit here in Brattleboro. We certainly will be rolling out a lot of educational programming, including our popular You're In My Garden webinar series. Uh, which teaches folks about how to use a uh, home scale collection and application of their own urine to support the vegetables they are growing in their own gardens. In the future, we see the nutrient recycling model as something that can expand to communities across the country and potentially around the world as we provide tools and knowledge and resources to help folks understand the power of this practice and also the practical applications of how to do it. Please do reach out to us with all of your questions and comments and potentially teach each other things about the practices that we have around closing the nutrient cycle in our communities. Thank you.